have victory. Come on and bless him in the building. Glory to God. We are Piedmont Episcopal District. We are so thrilled that Zion has come to be with us here in Piedmont where the right reverend Daryl Bruce the Stars and Miss Camille Stars are leading us and we are just so thankful and grateful to share with you in this welcome. You may be seated on tonight. We're going to call on the Reverend Lloyd Nivens, pastor of the Mount Pisgah Amy Zion Church to bring to us a selection and after that selection the Reverend Dr. Charles H. Wilson, pastor of the Bethel Amy Zion Church, will lead us with the scripture. Let the church say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody come to praise the Lord on tonight? Oh, don't fool me now. Anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus on tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do this old song as we prepare our hearts for worship. Amen. This morning when I rose, yeah. Oh, this morning when I rose, yeah.
you permit me to read just a few verses of the Holy Writ? We'll share with you from the Gospel according to John. I want to read from the first chapter. And just a few verses from the 12th through the 14th verses. Go with me for a moment. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Then something happened, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of God for the people of God. We're going to ask the ushers if they will let those who are waiting in before we ask that the Reverend Dr. Carolyn Dewberry would come and lead us in a word of prayer. Zion, are we all right tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. I've heard it said many times before. Prayer is the key to the kingdom. But faith unlocks the door. Anybody got a faith key tonight? Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, our Father, God, we give you thanks and praise for who you are. For you are Jehovah. God, we know that you are almighty. We thank you, Father, for you have allowed us, God, to gather here in this place. We realize, God, that we live, move, and have our being because of you. So we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this Connectional Council meeting. God, we give you thanks and praise for the Board of Bishops. Oh, God, we thank you for the Senior Bishop, Bishop Kenneth Monroe. God, we give you thanks and praise for the President, Bishop Proctor. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for every Zionite that has come this way. God, have your way in this place. Oh, God, you've been good to us. Many, Lord, that was here on the last time we were able to gather together, Lord, but are not here right now. But because of your grace and mercy, oh, God, you have allowed us to come together one more time. For that, God, we're grateful. And Father, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that you will look down upon those, Lord, those, Lord, that are sick in their bodies, many, Lord, that are suffering right now, Father. Oh God, somebody's having to go on dialysis. Somebody, Lord, is having to undergo radiation treatment. Somebody right now, God, chemo treatments. But whatever it is, oh God, we know you to be a healer. Oh God, you promise you won't leave us nor forsake us. For that, God, we're grateful. 
God, we pray that you continue to carry us through this meeting, oh God, as we have come here in this Piedmont Episcopal District. Oh God, have your way. Manifest yourself, God, even the more to your people, God. We thank you, Lord. Oh God, we pray, Lord, that when we begin to leave this place, God, we would leave knowing that we've been in your presence, that you are working a mighty work in Zion. God, we thank you. We bless you, God. We lift you up, Father, for you are a holy God, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Man, how many of you were blessed this morning during the worship experience? Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit welcomed us into this place and blessed us and rested on us. And we have had a fruitful day. We are thankful unto God for how he has just kept us together as a family. And we are just growing together. Can we just celebrate God, amen, for what he's done for us all day long? Hallelujah. Amen. Piedmont wants to welcome you in a special way, and we're asking Mrs. Carolyn Quick and Mrs. Patricia McCoy to come and to share that welcome with you after they finish, and the Reverend Dr. Michael E. Ellis will present to us uh, the bishop. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Piedmont Episcopal District is the home where you put one foot on the ground and before the other foot even touches the ground, there stands the immediate pres past president. You didn't tell me you invited the United States president. No, I did not invite Joe Biden. <laughs> the past president of the board, a bishop, a jolly, wise, young, happy bishop. When the door dances open, the first thing you'll see is a huge smile. And the first thing you will feel is a grand high five and a elbow bump. And the first thing you'll hear is your name spoken with excitement, elation, jubilation, and much, much love. Piedmont Episcopal District is the home where you don't have to be anybody but you. You don't have to worry about being good enough because you will surely be loved. You don't have to be strong enough. You don't have to be pretty enough, and not even handsome enough, or guard your heart or deny your mistakes, or hide your, wound, hide your wounds, or silence your needs, or measure your hopes and dreams. You don't have to pretend to be somebody you're not so you can belong. Yeah. Because at our home, the Piedmont Episcopal District, you already belong. Because you are a child of God. So we say welcome to you. Come on in and praise the Lord. Come on in and praise the Lord. Come on in, child of God. We welcome you to the Connection to Council, and we approve this welcome. Good evening to Bishop Proctor, President of the Board, Bishop Kenneth Monroe, Senior Bishop, to the Board of Bishops, Connection of General Officers, presiding elders, pastors, and the wonderful executive board members and missionaries and lay across our beloved Zion, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Since they were talking about the presidency, generally you say something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I present it to you the President of the United States.
our bishop deserves a little bit more than that because he is the presiding prelate of an area that produces leaders from all ranks and files of our church. He comes to us from the great state of Tennessee that I know a little bit about. And then he served as, as a pastor and a general officer and the church looked upon him and his leadership and decided in 2008 to elevate him as the 96th bishop in the line of succession of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. I present to you a distinguished gentleman who has come to Piedmont with vision, a retreat that set us strategically for the next generation. And we are ready to move because God sent him for such a time as this. Let us rise to our feet as I present to you, Right Reverend Darrell Brewster Starn Sr., the distinguished presiding prelate of the Piedmont Episcopal District. Let us welcome him at this time. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I gave one instruction to the welcome committee. I said, all I want, whatever y'all do, is by 720, I want to be presenting the, gap, the, the microphone to Bishop Proctor. <laughs> Did they do that? Did they not do that? Obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. And I want to thank Piedmont for the way they do things with style and creativity. And we are so grateful on behalf of my honey bun, Sister Camille Cullum Starnes, and the Piedmont family that consists of the Blue Ridge Conference. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. The West Central North Carolina Conference. Yeah. And the Western North Carolina Conference. Yeah. And three conferences in Jamaica. Yeah. Hallelujah. Middlesex, Surrey, and Cornwall. We are so glad that you chose to come to the Piedmont Episcopal District for this Connection Council. We're grateful that you chose to come to us for the Board of Bishops meeting too. <laughs> but COVID said, that's going to be virtual. <laughs> and so God, in his providence, made it possible for us to be together. Are you excited that we were able to be together? And what I'm excited about is that the Holy Spirit has met us here. We love you, Piedmont. And we thank each of you who participated in this program and I don't want to talk too much because I think the president is going to touch somebody to respond to this welcome and so I'm happy now I'm happy I am so happy to present the president of the board of bishops for this Amy Zion Church none other than the right reverend Dennis V. Proctor. Come on and stand and receive our president. And let me check my watch. Yes, 719. <laughs> Thank you very kindly. You may be seated. He said it's 719. So he kept his word 
and uh, we were able to move expeditiously, but not just expeditiously, but fruitfully. Uh, we enjoy hearing the kinds of creativity that we have around our church, and indeed, it does our hearts good. Uh, I am also very grateful to be able to share tonight and to stand here and to tap the person, as he says, on the shoulder who should come and uh, speak for us and give a response to this tremendous welcome. I'm going to ask that the Reverend Marlon Bussey would come. She is the pastor of the St. James Church in San Mateo, California, that she would come and respond to this welcome. Good evening, church. I was sitting there and I was saying hello to Bishop Proctor. He was the bishop that gave me the appointment to St. James. And I had this funny feeling in my stomach. And I said, surely he wouldn't call on me to do the response. But the Holy Spirit always tries to get you ready. Amen. I want to thank this district for a lovely um, hospitality. We've, we've received so much wonderful hospitality uh, from you. The welcome was just lovely and very creatively done. And I know that I speak for all of us when we say we're happy to be here. We're happy to just be back together again, amen? It's been a long time. And the Spirit of God just moved through this place this morning, and I'm looking forward to it moving through this place again as my current bishop comes before us to preach tonight, amen? God bless you. Thank you, Piedmont District, for all that you've done and all of the love that you've shown us, amen? Amen. Wonderful. Amen. She's grown quite a bit. <laughs> Given her a first appointment, and uh, now we see her moving around a noted great family out on the West Coast, including her sister, who you know, but her parents are just superb people. And uh, I am grateful to be a part. I believe we're ready to transition now from our wonderful welcome program, and we knew that it was going to be on time, number one, with Bishop Storms, but then we also knew that it was going to be creative and full of that which makes it really enjoyable for us to come and gather together, that we get something. And the other part is we're not going to be here all night. Everybody know you, we're not going to be here all night. So we, the Holy Spirit doesn't need all night to do anything. So we want to make sure that we honor the power and the efficiency of the Holy Spirit as we prepare and begin our worship. Um, I would hope that someone would also assist. I see Dr. Kent coming in and he's on a mobile vehicle. So we want to make sure that those who would be on our vehicles can get around. If not, we may have to go back out and come around and we have some more room, some extra room up here um, so that we will not get you stuck anywhere. That's Brother Montgomery. Thank you. You all make sure that uh, Reverend Morrison, y'all make sure that he can get situated comfortably. Okay. There are some members of the Western Episcopal District, I'm sure that here tonight to share and encourage the heart of their bishop. Would you come and join us? He's went to Rogue, and uh, I'm sure if you're here, come on. If not, what choir do we have over there? This is the Little Rock Ensemble. All right. Y'all are socially distanced and everything. Masked, vaxxed, boosted, I hope. And uh, you're here tonight. Why don't you open us during this transition as we wait for our preacher and he's assigned uh, his people to be a part of this worship service tonight. Why don't you get us started with a wonderful hymn and then we are, we've had prayer, we've had scripture, 
uh, and we're ready to roll on. Amen.
God has spoken. Thank you. Little Rock has spoken. And the church is saying amen. It's time for us to give. We're going to lift our offering at this moment. And uh, I pray, please slow down Reverend Sam Brown, who just went running down the steps to run out to get the baskets, I believe. We want to share tonight in an offering that is pleasing unto God. If you've had a good time while you're here, then one of the ways in which we express our gratitude to God is what we give. Give of ourselves first, of course. Then we give of our service. Then we give of our substance. And I pray that God would allow us to be generous in our spirit as we give. I think at this time, as old as we are in here, nobody needs to tell you what to give. You ought to be ready to give and excited. But if you just need me to do it, I can. But uh, we would like for you to prepare your offering, give an offering. We're not having a lot of offerings tonight. Those of you online, you know how to use Cash App, Give LaFi. We pray that you would do that. You'll share with us a $100 offering. If you don't have 100 then share with us $25 tonight. But do one or the other. Now, how many of you are saying, I'm glad he gave me an option? Let me see your hand. I'm glad. Okay, all right. God never wants what we don't have. He only wants what we do and that we're willing to give into the work of his ministry. And I pray. I don't hear our cash app, text to give, possibly. All right. On the screens before behind me and we pray if you want to send your check in you send it to Shannon North Carolina the Board of Bishops care of the board make the check out to the Board of Bishops uh, in Shannon uh, it doesn't have to be made to Bishop Kenneth Monroe but he lives somewhere in Shannon and uh, we don't want it to get confused with uh, with that account over there an old Lowry Road okay let's prepare our hearts now father would you bless us as we give we pray that it would be a seed that would bring forth a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir, come on. You can continue to bless us in song, and uh, we're going to give as unto the Lord. I have my wife's gift also, unless she has her own, and then you can pay that. Okay. All right. I got us. Keep. Go right there. Come right behind there and get what you need. Yes. All of those wonderful folk who were up here earlier, if you would, would come and help us, amen. In case you don't know that, this is Reverend Keith, Dr. Keith Tillich, pastor of the Simon Temple. AME Zion Church in Fayetteville. This is his first connectional meeting as the pastor of that great church. And he now chairs a finance operation and committee by virtue of his appointment by his bishop. Oh! 
want to direct you. Just as we did this morning. Come on, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Stay, stay peaked up because we're about to call on you and we're going to put the preacher up and he's going to say a word from the Lord 
then we're going to get somebody saved, get somebody renewed, and then go home. Okay? And uh, it'll be all right. You'll be okay. General Lattimore, we'll be all right. That's how we ought to do things. We ought to be able to do this and not just grieve the Holy Spirit when we're trying to take time that he doesn't want us to take uh, or the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to take. It's my privilege now to present the senior active among us in the personage of one who hails from Red Springs and uh, now resides in Shannon. Uh, you know him well. We are all family here. I present to you the senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the Right Reverend Kenneth Monroe. Would you stand to receive him? Thank you. You may be seated. I wish to thank Bishop Proctor and all of you for your presence today. And, and before I uh, carry out the responsibility that I have, I need to announce our offering for this morning. Uh, the Ministry of Kindness is $2,547. And the morning offering, $27,000. $941 with a total of $30,488. It is my pleasure at this time to present our preacher. And I'm grateful we do have a preacher. He's coming back. He's already back. Oh, good. Yeah, I get a little nervous sometimes. Um, it was my privilege to serve as his bishop. I've known him a long time. He hails from Apex, North Carolina. That means at a high level. A member of Holland's Chapel. AME Zion Church there. And please don't let that name on fool you. That's a great church. I remember him being under the Reverend Lawrence Turner, who was my friend who we started together. And Presiding Elder S.J. Farrah. His first appointment was Mount View, and no, it was Long Memorial. And you've heard him talk about five members and a cow. And a cow is no longer a member. From there, he was sent to Union Grove, Bear Creek, little small places, but great churches. And I remember when Bishop Battle sent him to Simon Temple. Simon Temple was a great church, and I said to him at one time, I'd like, I we wanted to go to Simon Temple. But instead, Bishop Miller sent me to Kansas City. And he said to me, well, you got it now. <laughs> I remember him calling me when Simon Temple began his growth. He was working a secular job, and he called me, and I was in, Can I was in Hartford, Connecticut. And he asked me about becoming full time. And I said to him, it's important for us as ministers when we 
need to trust God and go places we've never gone before, do things we've never done before. And he became full time and there spurred a tremendous growth at Simon Temple. Now, you have to understand, uh, Brian Thompson is a country preacher. Well, he can't be nothing else. That's where he came from. But he was able to connect to people, and because he has a compassion for people, that's what brought people to him and to the church, Simon Temple. He's done a marvelous job. He's a graduate of St. Augustine in Raleigh. And from there to seminary work at United in Dayton and received his master's degree Master Divinity degree and United, we received his Doctor of Ministry. A marvelous personality, a strong uh, clergyman in the city of Fayetteville and in the eastern part of the state of North Carolina. He's married to the Reverend Felica Thompson, who is a Preacher in her own right. Tremendous preacher. Two children, Alexia and Brian Jr. I ask your prayers for him as he comes before you tonight to bring a word from the Lord. It's coming. You prepare yourself to receive it. After a selection from the ensemble, I understand, from Little Rock, would you receive the Right Reverend Brian R. Thompson, presiding bishop of the Western Episcopal District, African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for being in this space of time tonight. I'm saved by the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Now, Bishop done told you I'm straight, jack leg, country preacher. That's what I am, and if I be who I is, I ain't got to act like who I am. But on a Tuesday night, after a service like we had today, after all the heck we've been through, it would seem like somebody would want to praise the Lord. The Bible says, let them that have breath do what? Now let me tell you something. I want you to look at your neighbor to your left and your right. You ain't got to say nothing to him. You ain't got to say nothing. Just look at him to your left. Look at the head, the foot, foot, the head. You're looking at two made up messes. Folks that ain't supposed to be here. Folks are supposed to lose their mind a long time ago. Some folks know they're supposed to be in the crazy house or the insane asylum. But let me tell you something. You ought to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And who in here ain't scared to give God glory right now? Because it was God that brought you from a mighty long way. How many know it could have been the other way? But somebody say, I'm still here. Are we just going to sit around after what God has brought us through? Please don't come and be here with your cologne on and got your stuff all together and act like we ain't been through something. We've been through trauma. We've been through grief. But let me tell you something. you got to tell God, thank you tonight because he brought us from a mighty long way. You ask God to let us get back together and then you want to sit there like a member of the chosen soldier. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, what? What? Somebody thank God for saving you tonight. Now let me tell you something. You can sit there and look at me all you want to. But let me tell you, I ain't scared of none of y'all. I ain't scared of nobody but Jesus. And he's the one that allowed me to get here tonight. And if you think I'm going to change because I got on some purple and this cross. Oh, silly rabbit tricks are for kids. If it got me here, I'm going to be who I am till Jesus comes and gets me. Somebody tell God, thank you. had to get that off me real quick. But let me tell you something. If you want to go to the mortuary, we can hook you up. But then, see, if you're alive, you got to give God glory for the wonderful thing. How do you know it don't matter about your car, house, title, or position? I'm just glad to be in the number one more time. Hallelujah. I got to 12 o'clock, so let me get started. So I give honor to God, to President of the Board of Bishops, Bishop Dennis Vernon Proctor, to the Senior Bishop, Bishop Kenneth, no middle name Monroe, my father in the Episcopal City, to my classmate in the other Board of Bishops, we thank God for each and every one of you, to the missionary supervisors. God bless all of you. And as my bishop says to my supervisor, the mm in my good and the <laughs> in my Mufasa. I just thank God for my lovely wife as bishop has said, the missionary supervisor of the Western Episcopal District, Reverend Felica Thompson. I thank God for her too. Our children, Lexi and Brian, that drove down the day to be with they diddy and mom. Y'all stand up so they can see you. Amen. Used to see them in baby carriages, 18 months apart, here at the Board of Bishops and General, uh, General Conference and everything else. And there they grown and both of them in college. And we thank God for, for them. 
We thank God for Jalen, Jalen, Lexi's boyfriend. Yeah, I said boyfriend. If you got a problem with it, at least you ain't got a girlfriend. Amen. I thank God for him being here tonight. Amen. And if you don't like it, Jimmy crack corn and... Hallelujah. To the general officers and your spouses, to the WH and OM Society, I want to thank God for you, to this host Episcopal District, to the Connectional Council, as my good friend Darren Mitchell says, and those in protocol and those I don't know to call. I'm just glad to see all of y'all here. I should be visibly nervous, and I is. Somebody told me, you ain't got no reason to be nervous. I said, well, you get up there and preach then. I think if you ain't nervous, something wrong with you. And I'm overly nervous, not because that I want to please you, but I need to please God. I want to thank all the members of the Western Episcopal District. Will you please stand? Because you done flown a mighty long way. Come on here. Come on here. Thank you, Western Episcopal District. They have our back, and I thank God for them. And I want to publicly thank the Board of Bishops, each Episcopal area, to the Eastern North Carolina Episcopal District, my home area, who has been the largest giver and sower of seed into the Western Episcopal District since one year ago to the WH and OM Society for your generous contribution to church growth and development, to Letitia Hill Godet Ministries, and all of those that gave. If I missed it, God is still gonna bless you. And we thank you, not seeing us as a charity case, but sowing into good seed, because we shall return. And it's on the way coming, amen. So I thank God for you to my mother and father who are watching online, trying to maneuver technology in Facebook. I ain't gonna say nothing bad because I gotta go back home and they may meet me at the house. But I'm glad that they are here, they are, they are watching. Isaiah the sixth chapter. This is where we find our assignment. And I'm gonna read from the NIV version. Isaiah 6, and I'm just going to use verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on the throne, and his train of his robe filled the temple. I want to lift for a subject when it seems like all hope is gone when it seems like all hope is gone. Let us pray. Father, touch right now. I can't do this and won't even try to do this without you. Speak through this frail body that I may give a mighty word to your people that if they don't even remember my name or I was in front of them, let the word of God permeate through this place that lives will be changed. And someone must may say, what must I do to be saved. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeemed say amen. When it seems like all hope is gone. God has a funny way of allowing uh, Dr. Scott experiences. And he allows something to happen to me today as he normally does. Bishop Moore, I went to my room to collect my thoughts, and my wife and I had said to the housekeeping, and I'm sure if you can testify, please clean our room today. When I got there, it won't clean. It's called down, and they decided, Sister Leek, I ain't answering the phone. So I started out on an excavation myself to go find the housekeeping staff, and I looked down and saw one on the floor, but nobody was on our floor. I said, I need to get with the Lord. I ain't got time to be playing with these towels and housekeeping. All of a sudden, I heard people outside of my door talking. 
And as they were talking, uh, I heard them using uh, Spanish and English. And, and I looked through the window and I saw them and I didn't know what they were saying. But I knew that if I could get them quick enough, maybe they'd clean my room. I sat there and used one of my prayers up and said, please let them clean it today. And I opened the door and the lady was talking to another housekeeper. They were talking about something. All I knew is they were frustrated. Very frustrated. I don't know if they were talking in an unknown tongue. I didn't know what they were saying. But they were talking about something that was going on. And all I heard, uh, President Justin Wade, she kept saying, 25 rooms, 25 rooms. And that means she'd done 25 rooms. Her head was down, Bishop Crenshaw, and she wouldn't look up as I opened the door. Maybe she was oblivious to me there because she had a hard day. And I would not sit there and be able to uh, be a skeptic or be a critic and say she should be glad to have a job because you should too, but you complain also. <laughs> and I sat there and I looked at her and I was clearing my voice. She didn't look up. She kept talking to the other lady. And all of a sudden, she looked up at me, and I saw her look up at me in disdain, like, you're the one that called downstairs that's got me here on my bainty face room. I, I saw her there. I could see it in her face. I could read it. I didn't have to be a prophet. I knew what she was saying. <laughs> that sister looked up at me, rolled her eyes, looked down, and then she looked up and said, Veo Esperanzo in Cristo. I didn't listen in class, so I didn't know what she was saying. And she said, she said, Veo Esperando in Cristo. Veo Esperando in Cristo. And started to point at my jacket. I looked at her and I thought maybe she realized I was a clergyman and maybe she was going to give me some mercy. She said, Veo Esperando in Cristo. And kept pointing and something happened inside of her. And I said to that lady, what is Veo Esperando in Cristo? She said, there's hope in Christ. And I said, how, how, how would she get in, in Veo and Esperanto and Cristo out of seeing me? Was it my collar or my cross? She said, no, but there's a, there's a lapel pin on your, your lapel. It has an A, a M, a Z, but there's a red cross in the middle of it. And I said, so she got that and she said, because when we see the cross, we know that there's hope in Christ. Now I want to tell somebody in here, maybe you're not moved by somebody else's place, but how many know when you can see the cross, there's always hope in Christ? Don't you ever get so down that you can't see the hope in Christ? And it reminded me of what the Lord has brought us through. Oh, see, some of y'all want to go into the witness protection program and get on these grounds and act like you don't need to talk about it. But confession is good for the soul. After being in court and, 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 and in law fees and going through churches closing down and people leaving our denomination, some of y'all couldn't wait to get back together. Then when you came back together, you couldn't even say Veo Esperanzo in Cristo. Because you're worried about who going to get who, who going to talk about who, who going to show up. But it ain't nothing if God don't show up. And is there anybody in here that can thank God today that even when it seems like hope is gone, God's got us in the palm of his hand. I stopped by to tell somebody, I don't know how bad it looks to you, but God is turning this thing around. How do I know? Because he woke us up this morning and started us on our way and led us to the connection of counsel. Somebody Somebody say I'm still here. Problem is, we are not the only ones. Bishop Monroe, we're not the only ones who've been through this. We can look at the United Methodist, our Methodist brothers and sisters. They going through hell. We can look at the AMEs. They going through hell. I told Bishop uh, 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 Haynes the other day, y'all the only Methodist body that's doing all right. He said, we were going through hell before y'all got there. Y'all just made it after us. Because you must understand, sometimes it feels like all hope is gone. And it was that year, Dr. Walker, that all hope was gone for them. 
But for Isaiah, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. Came to a point where he said all oh, hope was gone. And as he's sitting there, he's going through something because he finds himself where his mentor has found himself gone. And now he's left by himself. Theologian said that maybe it's a mentor-mentee conversation or relationship. Maybe it's like an uncle and a nephew. Maybe it's a friend buddy. Maybe it's a preacher and a local preacher a situation. But either way, it was in the year that King Uzziah died. And as we find Isaiah and he finds this situation, he's wondering, how am I going to make it through? How am I going to make it through? Because notice he starts off the text in the year that King Uzziah died. And let me tell you, grief will mess you up. Trauma will mess you up. And let me tell you, I think you said it today, Bishop Moore, we're going through a textbook picture of trauma. Everybody want to walk around like there ain't nothing going on because we wear the mask. Want to act like, see, I knew we were going to get quiet then because you want to fake it till you make it. Sometimes you can't conquer it till you confront it. Sometimes until you say, yeah, I've been through it. It stressed me out, but thank God he's bringing us out. In the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord all. And as he's dealing with this, He's dealing with a situation where he feels like all hope is gone. And I wonder if any of you been in a situation where you felt like it seems like all hope was gone. Let's forget the church since y'all don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about your own life. Have you ever been there where something grabbed you so bad that you felt like all hope is gone? Maybe not you, but maybe it happened to your children. How many of you know if he can't get you, he'll come after your children? And let me tell you something. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how sanctified you are. Let your child, let your spouse go through something. And it will seem like all hope is gone. I believe the Academy Awards out of common interview, the Avis Eye Church and Christendom all over the world. Because we're some of the biggest actors I've ever seen. We ought to receive an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in fictional films and reality show because we act like we always are. How you doing? Best and highly favored. Coming out of debt. Everything going to be all right. What do you do when you don't feel like shaking nobody's hand, when you don't feel like giving nobody no high five, when you don't feel like no praise and worship? Now, I know y'all don't want to talk about that. Because some of y'all fake folk act like you got it together all the time. The devil is a lie. Sometimes you just don't feel like it. Sometimes, Dr. Tillett, it feels like all hope is gone. In the year that King Uzziah died, he finds himself in the same situation. And it says that he's outside the temple. As he's outside the temple, he sees what's going on. He sees the depravity. He sees cops killing a a young, a black males and black females, shooting them 119 times and bragging about it. That's what he sees outside the temple. See, the government does not care about a people, but cares about their own political agenda. That's outside the temple. He sees a Supreme Court who won't deal with AR-15s and AK-47s, but want to put their hands on women's bodies. There's a problem because it's outside the temple. It's in the year that King Uzziah died, and he's outside the temple. And Reverend Morrison has a problem with this. As he's outside the temple, he finds himself depressed. He finds himself low. And I don't know about you, I know COVID is real, but there's something about being inside the temple. There's something about being with the Lord and being with the people of God. And when he finds himself outside the temple, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord also high and lifted up. When he sees that, it's a strange thing. Because what he does is, he goes from outside the temple to inside the temple. Now understand something, it's all right to be outside of the house of the Lord. But there's something that happens when you get inside the house of the Lord. 
there's something, uh, Reverend Henry Gregory, when you go inside of the house, there's something that infuses and becomes uh, contagious. And I saw it this morning. Y'all act like that y'all were a part of the Holy Rollers. You act like you were part of Christendom that have been in charge with the power of the Holy Ghost. And the move of God moved through this place. And I saw some of you quench the spirit and sat there about to blow up understanding something. When the spirit of God moved, you might as well go ahead and praise him. There was an apostolic shift this morning. And because you too prime and proper and you don't want to lose your cool points in front of folks who don't make no difference no way. How many know I've been through enough the last year? I ain't got time to care whether you like my shout or not, whether you like my holler or not. Somebody tell God, thank you. In the air, that king of died. He says, I saw the Lord. High and lifted up. And this is the problem was. I saw the challenges outside the temple. I saw the, the challenges inside the temple. But when I got into the house of the Lord, something changed. Now, the NIV, uh, Bishop Brown, has a different connotation than the, than the KJV. I grew up in the old school KJV. It says, I saw also the Lord, which means even with trouble, I still see the Lord. And is there anybody up in here that knows I see the trouble that's going on, but I see the Lord working this thing out. I see the Lord in what I'm going through. Let me tell you, some of y'all sat beside the wrong neighbor because they sitting there checking their watch, seeing when they can get up and watch TV. But let me tell you, when you go through something in your life like we've been through, there's something about I need to see the Lord also. I mean, y'all know I'm glad to see other Zionites, but I need to see the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I need to see the great I am. Somebody say, I need to see the Lord. In the year that King of Zion died, I saw also the Lord. And his train filled the temple. And he was high. And help me preach this sermon in here. And watch that. There's three things I'm a Methodist preacher. When he saw this, for us to be able to have hope in what seems like a hopeless situation, when it seems like all oh, hope is gone, Bishop Eric Lee, classmate, first of all, you've got to be pierced by his presence. Let me tell you something, Reverend Betts. A lot of folk in church, but they ain't got pierced yet. A lot of folks came to the Connectional Council, but they ain't got converted yet. A lot of folk came to see vendors and buy soups and, and, buy, and buy scarves and other things, but forgot they need the lay of the Holy Ghost. Because let me tell you something, ain't we learned that our history won't get us through the hell we going through? It's going to take us coming back to God and repenting to God and say, God, I know we sinned, but we still hear you calling our name. Watch what happens here. You know the problem with us? It's going to get quiet in a minute. Because we don't get wowed by God no more. Don't let move us no more. We don't believe in signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm going to say it, and I don't care who don't like it. We don't believe it. We talk about it. But Reverend Ralford, folks don't believe it. You can, uh, you can call Peter Popoff, and you can call folks on TV. But you can't call for yourself to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let me tell you something. God is still working miracles. You just got to have faith to believe because we ain't been. When the last time you've been wowed by God? Some of y'all talking about I ain't gave me no car, ain't gave me no house. If that's all you need, get your credit together. But when you need God to do something for you, when you need for him to deliver your child, when you need for him to fix your marriage, when you need for him to touch your situation, that's when we get pierced by his presence. A lot of people in the body of Christ ain't pierced no more. Dr. James David, a lot of folk walk around here with their butt on their shoulder. Acting like they stuff don't stink. Let me tell you something. We don't want to walk circumspectly before God. There's no recognition of who he is. How 
can he move up in here, uh, Reverend Cows? How can he move and we not recognize his presence? This morning, while you were praying that the people stopped playing and the heaven would stop and the people would stop jumping, I said, God, please don't take your hand off us. Please don't move us from this amount of privilege. Because let me tell you something, when you get pierced by his presence, Something on the inside won't let you stay still. I wish I had some witnesses up in here that say I vow to praise him for the rest of my life. Is there anybody up in here that knows my praise cannot be bought? It cannot be negotiated. It cannot be put on a silver platter because praise is what I do. In the air, back King Uzziah died. And you know what? You know what? You know what we've become, Dr. Harden? Professional churchgoers. We know when to stand up. We know everything we're supposed to do. But we've, we've so programmed ourselves. We don't look for the move of God. So when he moves like he did this morning, we don't recognize him because we have not become intimate with him. We've been intimate with other folk, but we ain't been intimate with God. And when we're not intimate with God, we don't know him when he shows up. But I'm looking for some folks who want some intimacy from God. I don't need folks to pat me on my back. I don't need folks to like me. Please get delivered from folk liking you and start to love God. And as long as God loves me, I can be pierced by his In the year that King Adazai died, he was pierced by his, 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 his presence. And watch what happened. It says that he's sitting on the throne. I'm going to be, Dr. Kent, folk don't want to hear it. It's all right. He's pierced by his presence because watch what, he's seated on the throne. And that's in the text. It's in the text. And when he's seated on the throne, notice this is a position of authority. The board of bishops, let me tell you something. What I learned is that we are just as fragile as you are. Ah, so you don't want truth now. Sometimes we grapple with the things of the church and the things of life. We have to come together and say, Lord, guide us by great Jehovah. Because let me tell you, when you start thinking you can solve it and you don't ask God to solve it, you're looking for man and you're not looking for God. And how many know I don't need answers from man? I need answers from And notice when he's doing, he's seated on the throne in that position of authority, which means he's not running around, Dr. Banks, wondering what's going to happen. That means he's sitting there saying, I got this. And I know some of y'all, how many of y'all know it seemed like a hopeless situation for the last couple of years? But I've had to regulate myself to God's got this. I got to regulate myself that if he's not pacing the floor, why am I pacing the floor? <laughs> if he never sleeps and slumbers, why am I up all night? Because when you get pierced by his presence, you know the equivalent without a doubt. He may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. Understand something that whenever he's seated means he's in complete control. And when he's in complete control, understand this, that it says not only is his position of authority, but it says he's high and lifted up, which means he's in a position of majesty. See, understand majesty is that God is lifted up literally mean that he's above the fray. We fly every other week to the West Coast, and it seems like the higher we get, the better the air gets. That means that when we start out going up to 30,000 feet, Bishop, that the higher we get, the smaller things on the ground look. Some of y'all miss your shout cue. Because understand something, that some stuff you cannot meddle in down here. And how many know when I get pierced by his presence, the higher God goes up, the higher I'm going to go up. I'm looking for some folks up in here that know that if I lift up the name of Jesus, God will turn that thing around. Is there anybody in here? Oh, what is the year? That king us us I saw the Lord high and lifted up.
it up. And I understand, I had to ask the question, uh, Bishop Walker, how did it get high? How did it get lifted up? And I read and I tried to exegete the scripture. And it tells me this, that there are seraphim angels with six wings. It said with two that cover their face. With two that cover their feet. And with two they did fly. But that ain't what lifted them up. That ain't what lifted Jesus up. It said that they cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. How many know if I ever start praising God, I can move some obstacles out of the way. I can move some people out of the way. I can move some bakes out of the way. Somebody say, holy, holy, holy. I double dog day to give him praise right now. Don't you understand that I'm... It proves to me that it's not that the worship should not be a spectator sport. Because when he said holy, they said holy, which means they responded. In theology or in the seminary, we call it an intypical fashion. But in the country church of Chatham County, we call it call and response. Oh, there ought to be somebody up in here that when you see a holy, you ought to say holy too. When they say holly, you ought to say hallelujah. When you say thank you, you ought to say Jesus. Let's get some class participation. Holy, holy, holy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give God some glory. Watch what happens, and I'm getting in my seat. And the more they cried holy, it said that they hoisted him, which means they lifted him up. You might heist up your window, but you hoist God up. Because God is looking for Zion. Can I tell you from your sermon this morning? God is looking for Zion to unconditionally, undeniably choose him as Lord. Now, I know that ain't popular because some of y'all think because we wear crosses and we sing all things come of thee and we do the Apostles' Creed that we're lifting up Jesus. No, 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 no. Because let me tell you something, just because you got a steeple don't mean you're a church. Just because you have communion, do, please don't think you have quantania. Just because you come into the church don't mean you have worship. But how many know I don't care what church I go to? When I get up in there, I'm going to bust that club up. Because understand, party over here, party over here. There's an old song that says, I feel like busting loose. Now, let me tell you something. This morning, a Dr. Flewellen, somebody should have felt like busting loose. Ain't no way in the world this morning could happen that you didn't feel like the presence of God was moving up in here. But if you want to tell you something, that ain't the best it could be. Once you start to praise him like you done lost your mind, God will start to not only lift up, but he'll start to pour out blessings from heaven on your neighbor. Tell your neighbor this one for you. I double dog day to give God praise for your neighbor right now. They may not praise God for you, but how many will praise God for their neighbor? Some of y'all pick the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody two rows bump in the back and say this one for you. Up 
and see God is doing this. I'm, I'm going to be finished in a minute. God starts throwing, uh, Bishop Dogby, he starts throwing his weight around. When the kabog of God comes, he throws his weight around. Some of y'all don't understand that some folk you can't cuss out. Some folk you can't give the finger enough. You're going to have to learn how to let God throw his weight around. Lord, have mercy. And see, the problem is, we thought we did it. But God is waiting for Zion to say, you did it. And I understand this, that everybody praises God a different way. But I going to stick with the scripture. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord. How have we become the church of the chosen frozen? When I, my history tells me that we were the original Holy Rose. That somebody felt strangely warm. There comes a time in our life that when we come to the point where it seems like all hope is gone and what we're doing is not working, it's time to change up. And I want to tell you, Zion, if we will learn how to give God unadulterated praise, if we will learn how to stay prostrate before our face, if we will learn how to stay on our knees and not just praise him for the big stuff, but praise him for the little stuff. See, understand something. In the end, that the king of Zion died. It says that the place was filled with smoke. And when it was filled with smoke, it said his train filled the temple. And the doorposts started to shake. And it said, Bishop Frencher, that Isaiah was so pierced by his presence. He said, woe is me. <laughs> Reverend Frieda B. Me, Felica T., this is strange here. This brother is in grief. He's in trauma like the Amy Zion Church. He sees his mentor go down. And he says this, woe is me. Not only do we need to be pierced by his presence, but we ought to be frightened by our own human frailty. Oh, Lord. Bishops, y'all going to heaven because they're going to stop after this. Watch this. They are messed up because he realized that I'm frightened by my own human frailty because there comes a time where you got to realize you ain't all that. And while we were sitting around, let me tell you, truth be told, while we were sitting around snickering at the United Methodists, snickering at the AMEs, Niggering at the holiness church. God said, y'all turn coming. I ain't got to prove it. It's already happened. But let me tell you something. The enemy didn't know who he was messing with. He was messing with folks who've come from Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass who've been through a mighty long way. And how many of you know if God can bring them through, he can bring us through because I, I, I'm frightened by my own human frailty. You know the problem is, can I tell the truth? I got the mic, I'm going to tell it. If they cut me off, my mouth is big, you can tell. Watch what happens. Frightened by his own human frailty. Because what we like to do is compare ourselves to other people rather than to God. So as long as we're doing better than somebody else, then we think we got it going on. But other people are not our standards. God is our deliverer. God is our master. God is our, let the redeemed of the Lord. Watch what happens. He's found himself in a situation where the issue is too much. And he says, woe is me. And everybody in here ought to be frightened by your own human frailty. Because you ain't got it together. You ain't got nothing together. I know I'm frightened by my own human frailty. Because as scared as I was and is in preaching right now. I realized something, that it's not about what my will is. It's about what God's will is. And when you're on assignment from God, for whether it's a bishop, whether it's a preacher, whether it's a lay person, whether it's a missionary or Christian educator, you've got to understand something, that you ought to be frightened by your own human frailty. How are you going to walk through these halls and not speak to folk? How are you going to walk through these halls with your nose up in the air? You can't be Christian and arrogant at the same doggone time. Let me tell you, go sit your blessed assurance down. Because understand something, God. How? After all we've been through and going through. 
You're going to sit up there and not talk to people. Not help people. Not give folks a lending hand. That might be the person that have to be able to wipe your hind parts one day. You never know what you might have to be able to do. So you got to be careful. I'll make sure I said that. And when we get frightened by our own human frailty, we will stop being professional church workers and professional church goers and professional church actors because we understand something. We like to cover up our sin as long as we can magnify somebody else. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And notice what he says. I'm undone. I'm undone. That means I ain't worth two cents. I don't care what the name of your church is. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how many years it's been in existence. There comes a time when you understand something. It can close just like that. Statistics say that over 500,000 churches are going to close within the next 24 months. And I know we want to say it's going to be everybody else's. But if we're not careful... It won't be the economy that closes us down. It'll be God that closes us down. We've got to be careful that we walk with God. Watch what happens. Because watch what happens. A lot of folks can't conquer it because they won't confess it. But woe is me. And he says, I admit that I'm an undone man and I hang with some undone people. So I'm frightened by my own human frailty. I want to tell you, I love my beloved Zion Church. It's a great church, and I don't plan on going nowhere to the Lord take me home. This is a great church on a great foundation. Yeah, we got some issues, but everybody got issues. But understand something. I just believe God is about to turn some things around in our church. I just see it coming and happening. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that if we see this, get pierced by his presence, and understand, get frightened by our own human frailty, we'll start to trust more in him than we'll start to trust more in us. And when we do that, understand something. He says this, and watch what happens in the text. It says that as they take coals off fire, so not only are they crying, holy, 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 not only are they flying with two wings, and two wings cover their face, and with two wings they could fly. But Brian and Lex, watch what happens. It says they started multitasking. Because as they're flying and crying, holy, 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 watch what it does, Dr. Sattler. It says that the, that the, that the angel takes a coal off the fire, and he places over his Zion, excuse me, over his mouth. And as he puts it over his mouth, he says, I'm going to sanctify this. Yeah. And when he sanctifies this, you understand that fire is that part of saturation and sanctification, because after you come through the fire, you will come forth as pure gold. Watch what happens. Not only do you have to be pierced by his presence, not only do you have to be frightened by your own human frailty, but lastly, if you're going to understand that you're going to find hope in what seemingly is a hopeless situation, number three, you've got to be altered by God's enabling ability. You've got to be altered by God's enabling ability. Isaiah says the question for immediate answers because that question comes, whom shall we send? And whom shall go for us? And he says, here am I. Send me. And when he does this, he gets his ordination, his sanctification, his certification that he's ready to go. But he had to be pierced by his presence. He had to be frightened by his own human frailty. Now he's being changed by God's enabling ability. Understand something? When that enabling ability comes, it pulls you in. It does something to you. That while we've been here, his enabling ability of God has been moving on some of us. This morning, I saw it move. I tell you, do you see it, Bishop? Yeah. Senior Bishop, do you? I saw the move of God. Yeah. And I saw the shift come in. Yeah. And more than he just wanted us to shout, he wanted us to be committed and commit to him and say, I'm ready to work in any situation I find myself in. If I ain't got no title, if don't nobody mention my name, if don't nobody call me up on the stage, I'm ready to be used. Somebody say, send me. <laughs> when you get touched by God's enabling ability, something starts to work on the inside that folks can't understand on the outside. And you'll say, oh, what a change in my life. 
I want to talk to some people this evening and let you know if I never see you again that I stopped by to tell you that God is about to refresh some things. He's about to transition some things and he's about to renew some things. And is there anybody in this sanctuary that's called Embassy Sweet AME Zion Church that can give God glory right now because you realize God is moving something. Somebody say yeah. As I sat up in the room and the lady said to me, Aveo Esperanza in Cristo. And the lady told me about the, the cross they had on. I said she looked down when she was at the door. But when she came through the door, she said, sir, sir, do you want some towels? I said, we don't need no towels. I refresh anyway. I said, I thought you were tired. She said, eh, and Aveo Esperanza in Cristo. The other lady came from the other car and she said do you need some soap I said I don't think we need no soap she said yes 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 he needs soap he said veo aspirando and Cristo I said all right put the soap in that here she said do you need to try I already took out the trash no paper is inside of there I get the piece of paper because veo aspiranzo in Cristo I said to the other lady I thought you were tired she said when she saw somebody that believed in the same God she served I couldn't help Help, but slow her down because something energized inside of her. I want to talk to some folks up in here. How to reach the masses, men of every bird. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Somebody say lift him. Lift him. Lift him. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust this sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. Oh Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. When it seems like all hope is gone. God bless you. God keep you. where you going to live when you leave this earth. Jesus Christ has made it possible. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Is there one? We'll wait on you. We invite you to come. If you want to say yes to Jesus, it will be the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. Now, maybe 
you in a hopeless case tonight. Maybe you're in a situation you already know. If the Lord doesn't pull you out, you won't get out. Maybe you need to be pierced by his presence. Are frightened by your own human frailties or enabled by God's power. Right where you are, take a moment. Talk to the Lord. You know what He needs to do for you. Maybe you need a miracle. He's still in the miracle working business. As the musicians continue to play, if you need to pray, standing right where you are. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the message and we thank you for the messenger we thank you that you've spoken to us all day long now Lord it's up to us to respond to your word your will and your way seem hopeless tonight but we know that you are the God of all hope and that because you are the God of all hope we recognize that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine according to the power that is at work in us in the church by Christ Jesus Spirit of God fall afresh on us we trust that you will renew us that you will revive us that you will refresh us may we be pierced by your presence frightened by our own human frailties and enabled by your holy power to do what you call your church to do Forgive us if we play games or if we play church. Forgive us for business as usual rather than following your presence and your power. Lord, we put the church back in your hands so that we'll walk in hope, we'll walk in love, we'll walk in joy, We'll walk in peace and we'll walk in prosperity under the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, sing it. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lift your voices. Sing it like you mean it.
announcements that we would like to share with you before we close. First announcement, we are asking if you're willing to stop by the star cast table outside the ballroom and the credenza for an interview after worship service. Dan, Dana Radcliffe and Sam Brown are your contacts if you are willing to participate in this important interview. The Presiding Elders Council Summer Breakfast Meeting will be held on tomorrow, that's Wednesday morning, at 7 o'clock a.m. in the Concord G and H room. Again, that's Residing Elders Council Summer Breakfast Meeting tomorrow at 7 a.m. Concord G and H Room. International Ministers, Spouses, and Widow, Widows Fellowship tomorrow, Wednesday at 9 o'clock a.m. in the Carolina Ballroom. Shuttle service between our overflow hotels is being provided by our host, the Piedmont Episcopal District. This will involve the Hampton Inn, Hilton Inn, the Courtyard, the Residence Inn, all needing shuttle an airport bus or train, please sign up in the conference office, Harrisburg A. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Let's stand. Do you believe it's time to go? No, it's not? Well, we can tarry. I mean, we don't have anything else to do. Y'all want tarry? After you receive a word, you ought to be willing to say, let me go and put into practice. So the person that the preacher said you walked by and didn't speak to, now you can go at least and nod and work on getting it together so tomorrow you can hug. But this has been a mighty day. It has been a wonderful time in the Lord. We start tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. We start to finish our reporting. Trust me, we will finish our reports tomorrow. So I want you to be ready to rock and roll with us. We're going to get everything finished. So many of you have plans and reservations to leave on Thursday. We want to have most of our business completed by the time you try to check out of the hotel, okay? And so that we can all leave here on one accord. Anything else, General? All right, Christian Ed, you up first. We know Reverend Patrick Barrett is ready, and uh, we'll be here ready to share with him. We're going to receive our benediction tonight. Bishop Walker, would you come give us our benediction? And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power now and forevermore and all of God's people said
Thank you, Little Rock Ensemble and our musicians. We appreciate your major tonight. Oh, yes, John. Hey. All right. Appreciate your major. Brandon, you can switch to um, Hayden's camera. Check one, two. We need both of those mics on uh, for this interview.